Welcome to the seventh episode of RuPaul's Drag Race, Heroes vs. Villains. It's been a hot second, I know. As per tradition, let's look at the looks that you guys have submitted for the series. So let's start off with this fan art of Katya and Yara for their conjoined twins runway. As you can see, the artist fully went with my vision of their looks, with blood, grossness and all. Great job. Next is a depiction of Bendela Creme and Alaska from the episode 6 Maxi Challenge, where the queens had to do the whole singing comedy thing, a la season 4's top 6 challenge. Now, I must give a special shout out to that one milk from Twitter, who made the looks for all 6 pairs from the 6th episode, including Team Acacia, with their pageant realness looks that landed them in the bottom two. Well, wasn't just the looks. Team Bobomi, <laughs> I love that name, and I just need to see Naomi in something like what's shown here. That white with the fur and with the short hair on her would look stunning. Team Delaska, it rolls right off the tongue, love it. Especially love Dela's look here, but also I like that Alaska's covered in snake print. Team Jinxy, as in Jinx and Roxy, are out here looking like Merle Snow and a Mariah JLo hybrid. I don't know why I see that. Team Kara goes full on exaggerated. What would US people think of when they hear of a Russian woman or a Latina woman, mocking the stereotypes, but sadly failing in the challenge as a whole. Team Furin just swapped their original looks, but of course they also stepped them up. And lastly, Team Rajanka are just elegant and they show viciousness towards each other in their performance. Thank you all for contributing. The episode begins with Dela, Sharon, Alaska and Fifi in the workroom, wondering who was eliminated. Nobody seems to want to comment, with Fifi jokingly saying that she doesn't want another villain at it. But Sharon then goes, I'll step in for my partner. For me, Akira and Asia were the worst. It was literally a tired-ass showgirl act, which gets a laugh out of Fifi. Alaska then goes, but could Akira and Asia lose a lip sync? After which we would hear Akira yell from the entrance of the workroom, no they couldn't! Seemingly, the other girls were waiting for the right moment to walk in, and in a Laganja's entrance on season 6-esque moment, Akira took the best moment to boast about her win. Alaska yells back, who did you beat? And they see that Katya and Yara are not amongst the returning eight. The four high queens from last week are shocked. Mostly that Katya, a fan favorite, is gone so early. Even before what they assume would be a merge or something, they're not sure. We get a confessional from Sharon going, We have had winners go home. The heroes have now lost two queens. It's any team's game at this point. Cue the intro. The episode continues with the message that the queens get from Rue, that goes, My queens, last week we lost two of us. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Some of you are great in the challenges, but how are you on the runway, though? Rue enters the workroom and immediately points at Roxy and Jinx, who are still standing together, Well, actually all of the queens are standing with their previous partners, and goes, Did you like that little reference? Oh, but wait. This isn't right. Villains, please, step away from the heroes. We're back to our original division. So Ru tells the girls that, yes, from now on, the challenges will be done in the two groups, with one winner, one high team, and one person going home from the losing team. Ru continues by saying that this week's maxi challenge is a design challenge. Each team has to take the garments that their fallen teammates have left for them and create a look per queen. It is explained to us that each eliminated queen was asked to leave three looks for the rest of their team to work on for a future challenge. The pit crew brings out two groups of four racks with the clothes left, and the challenge is underway. Immediately, the heroes are at a loss for words. Given that their fallen teammates include Nina West, Tatiana, Katya, and Yara Sofia, they don't have the best of options. Nina's campy drag doesn't mesh well with Tatiana's more sexy, vampy drag, and while Katya and Yara's looks can sometimes get a little eclectic and over the top, they don't mesh well together. Sharon says, how am I supposed to make something scary with this, while holding some look that Nina left? The villains are also making comments on the whole ordeal that the heroes are in, mostly laughing at them and showing off how nice the clothes they have left are. The clothes in question are from Willem, the Vixen, Raven and Tyra Sanchez. While Rue is doing a walkthrough with the queens, he does his best to encourage the heroes not to give up. Asia and Bianca aren't really worried, but Dela is. 
Rue tells her that she shouldn't be, as her drag too is very campy, she should be able to hot glue something together from Nina's stuff. He helps Sharon too with her inspiration, saying that Tatiana's latexy black looks can be meshed with some of Katya's red that she left to give off that classic horror imagery. Bob and Jinx are also struggling because, well, again, they can't really figure out how to make something extraordinary from so many different looks. When Rue goes over to the villains, he tells them not to be lazy. They can't just wear the garments that were left by the queens. They actually have to do something with them. They do have an easier task, but just because they were dealt an easier hand, they shouldn't be passive competitors, as then they could lose. We cut to the runway now, and alongside Michelle and Carson, the guest judges are... Wait, what? Victoria Beckham and Merle Ginsburg? Just let me have this one. So, because this is a runway-related episode, there isn't much I can say how the queens are actually dressed, or what their looks would fully be, but based on the material provided, and based on well, who these queens are, and what kind of a story I'm telling, here are the results. Rue first declares the villains team as victorious. He then goes, for being able to mix all four of the eliminated villains' styles into a look that perfectly resembles her own, the winner of this week's maxi challenge is Akiria Davenport. The villains are off to D-drag and enjoy the rest of their day, secluded in their hotel rooms, yeah. It's time for the judges' critiques. Asia O'Hara is first applauded for her look, with the judges saying that they love that she was able to mix Yara's and Katya's styles into a fun Asia O'Hara look. It does help that Asia does have those moments of going a little over the top, but still looks nice. Dayla next gets a slight... <sighs> from Michelle first, being told that it seems like she was trying to go for a couple of different things with her look that makes two of Nina West's leftovers, and that, sadly, it seems like somebody is cosplaying as Nina rather than Nina's style being transformed into Dela's. Jinx went with mixing Yara's and Tatiana's aesthetics to give off a witchy vibe, and while the judges enjoyed the look, they can clearly see that it wasn't made by a master sewer and that it could have been done better. On the flip side, Bianca Del Rio gets high praise from the judges, with Rue even telling her, you know, if you were in a stronger team, you would have taken the win. Bianca took what was left of Nina West's looks and made a gown that didn't even seem like it would belong to Nina, but it was sparkly and just colorful enough but not too much to tell you where it came from. Sharon's critique starts with Victoria telling her that she likes that she went for a little black dress, but then all of the rest of her critiques are negative. It just seems like Sharon glued on random stuff onto a garment Tatiana left and called it a day. Rue tells her that this sort of a showing is surprising given that she did so well on her season in similar challenges. Lastly, Bob is told that she made a perfectly fine look, but that it's nothing too stunning. The heroes go into Untucked while the judges deliberate. Silence, I've made my decision. Bring back my heroes. Welcome back, ladies. Asia O'Hara. Bianca Del Rio. Job well done, ladies. You're both safe. Bob the Drag Queen. Fine is not going to cut it. You can do better. You're safe. Ben de la Creme. Your mishmash of an outfit was also a mismatch to your personality. Jinx Monsoon. Your witchy presentation on the runway did not leave the judges charmed. Sharon Needles. Your attempt at two looks becoming one did not spice up our lives. Jinx Monsoon, you're safe. Ben de la Creme and Cher Needles, I'm sorry, my dears, but you're up for elimination. The girls in the back and us, the audience, were almost led to believe that a Jinx versus Dela lip sync was about to happen, so everyone was shocked when Sharon was left there with Dela. Rue continues. Prior to tonight, you were asked to prepare a performance of Victoria Beckham's debut solo single, out of your mind. Ladies, this is your last chance to impress me and save yourself from elimination. The time has come for you to lip sync for your life. Good luck and don't fuck it up. 
Dela and Sharon both seem a little not ready for such a strong of the time 90s dance song. Sharon especially, who has some trouble dancing in her little black dress made out of latex. But she's putting up a fight against Dela, who has gone full on comedy, doing robot-esque movements, making faces at the judges and making them all laugh. The final blow seems to be when Dela looks Sharon dead in the face while lip syncing the boy you're wasting your timeline from the course. Ladies. I have made my decision. Ben de la Creme. Chante, you stay. We get a shocked look on pretty much everybody's face. Nobody was ready to see another winner go. Sharon Needles. Thank you for changing this competition for the better. Now, sashay away. And that's it. That's the episode. Were you expecting Sharon to go home? Do you think that the heroes are now at a disadvantage, that there is one less of them? Who do you think ends up winning next week? Thank you for watching.